Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. The sights and sounds of a disaster. People are still sending us video from last night's fire and explosion in Clinton Township as work continues to make sure all the dangerous projectiles from the fire are secured. A live look now from drone four. The fire is contained, but clearly not yet out. Look at that. And just within the past couple of hours, officials informed us some canisters in the pile of rubble were still exploding. And that is why they are still telling people to stay away from this scene. We've also learned the building was not approved for the storage yeah. of those explosive materials. The fire broke out at 850 last night at Select Distributors, also known as Goose Smoke Shop. It's located just southwest of 15 Mile and Grossbeck. A young man was killed by flying debris from that explosion while standing about a quarter mile away at a car wash located across Grossbeck and on the other side of 15 Mile. Rod Maloney is there live for us. Rod, uh, hard to imagine a worse building that possibly could have caught fire. Just packed with all these dangerous items, these explosive canisters and the knives that you showed us at 5 o'clock. Right, in fact, I have that knife, Devin, here. It's it's burnt. You can see it's bent as well. There were dozens of these flying around along with those canisters, which were heavy, a couple of pounds each, with butane in them exploding and shooting everywhere. They're on a local state of emergency right now, trying to figure out what exactly happened, but we have more clarity after a briefing here this afternoon. Last night's constant explosions shook the ground and everything else. Invisible to the eye until they hit nearby, butane canisters exploding into hot, sharp, jagged edges flying everywhere. Fire Chief Tim Duncan saying they quickly had to pull everybody back. It basically was a war zone. You had shrapnel going off everywhere you looked. Um, so if you were you're standing outside, you're wondering, When's the next piece coming at my way? In the daylight, we see the destruction bent and blackened canisters having landed on nearby roofs, burning holes in the metal sheeting. The Goo Select Distributors Marijuana Supply Company owner spent the day with police. Chief Dina Karinji saying. Still questioning the owner and the employees to try and determine what occurred. She told us that the business sat closed when the fire broke out. Employees filling online orders ran to neighboring businesses telling everyone to get out. As for why the canisters were even there, city manager Bob Cannon made it clear. They were illegally in that building. Of course, many watched the spectacularly dangerous display, cell phones recording, and few knew the real danger. A young man standing outside this car wash a quarter of a mile away wasn't so fortunate. He died from a head injury. Another firefighter injured when flaming hot metal flew through his vehicle windshield and hit him in the face, he was treated and released. Chief Tim Duncan called the limited injuries surprising. The fact that there was no other major injury or uh, you know somebody passing on that scene, somebody was looking out for us, that's all I can say. Now, that 19-year-old has not been identified police. They're still looking to communicate with his family. In the meantime, arson investigators are going to be on the scene tomorrow. Hopefully, the, the burned building will have cooled down by then. They're expected to bring in a canine and an entire team from ATF and MSP to try and figure out exactly how all of this happened. Reporting live in Clinton Township, Rod Maloney, Local 4. Yeah, wow. All right, Rod. Now, in the wake of the explosion, if you were with us last night, the immediate concern was about air quality. People have noticed an odor in the area, but hazmat teams have tested the air, concluding it's safe. One doctor, though, who's watching the numbers closely says today's weather has been helpful. So the air quality doesn't look bad. It looks pretty similar to what it was yesterday. Uh, not bad, and probably some of the rain has helped. Uh, keep a lot of the larger particles down on the ground. So whenever it rains, um, two things happen. One, larger particles make it, it make its way to the ground, so they're less likely to be aerosolized throughout the, the community. So the air quality, in essence, should be a little bit better because of the rain. Secondly, most people spend more time indoors, so they avoid going outdoors in the rain, so they're going to have less exposure to poor air quality if that's the case. Well, search teams have been finding debris as far as two miles away from the source of the fire. At least 25 canisters were secured on roofs and in yards and turned over to the bomb squad. Pamela Osborne has been giving us a closer look at that kind of damage, not just to homes, but there's a lot of businesses in that area, Pam. 
There certainly is. I'm going to step out of the way and show you. This is goo, or at least it's all that's left of it at this point. It's that retail vape shop. And if you take a look at the ground, you'll see the canisters and shredded pieces of canisters. Officials say they came from goo's back room and they should have never been there. And now we want to show you some of the damages these canisters caused to neighboring businesses. That's what I was afraid of when I walked around this morning finding somebody. Gene Reynolds was relieved to find no one injured or worse when he got to American Graphics Printing this morning, but he did find damage, especially to the roof. The, the scrap metal was all over the place and the broken windows and, and holes in the walls and the, and the concrete, so quite an explosion. On either side of the Grosbeck business are jagged, twisted pieces of metal and in some cases, entire canisters. The same canisters that exploded throughout the night Monday after fire erupted at a nearby vape shop, Goo Select Distributors. Uh, the explosions and what have you, did a lot of damage to the building here and next door. They're still assessing all there is to clean up but say this could have been much worse. So we were watching the wind last night, and fortunately it was going toward the west, and behind that building there was nothing there. Had it came this way, going east, we would have probably not standing here talking to you. And again, just take a look at all of this debris that's littered here. Now you can see, again, some of those canisters are still intact. Uh, it's going to require special teams to come out and pick those pieces up. But some of the other pieces of scraps, uh, there were crews out here earlier today trying to get rid of that. And as for these businesses, restoration crews are already here trying to help them board up. But certainly uh, just an incredible, incredible thing that happened last night, a tragedy as somebody did lose their life. Back to you. Wow. I just try to imagine being in that lot behind Pamela right now, it, last night when it was happening, in the dark, right. everything flying around. Really amazing stuff, Pamela. Our coverage continues at clickondetroit.com. You can scan the QR code in the lower left portion of the screen. You'll find in-depth coverage of all the different angles to this tragic fire. We also encourage people to keep sending us those eyewitness videos through MyPix. All right, this was day one of jury selection in James Crumbly's trial. The first pool of jurors was called just before 1.30 this afternoon. But there are questions about the challenges of sitting an impartial jury, given James Crumbly's wife Jennifer's trial got a lot of media attention last month. Sean Lay has been tracking all of this for us all day. Sean, what were the main questions for potential jurors today? Parenting and parenting style and guns and how you secure guns. Main questions for these jurors today. Now, 15 questions in the juror box. This is no way is going to be the jury. However, they were there for quite a long time before even just one was dismissed with a lot of give and take here with prosecutor Karen McDonald and James Crumley's attorney, uh, Marielle Lehman. Asked one woman in particular did say out of this jury pool of 308 that she had never heard of the Oxford school shooting. She had never heard of the Jennifer Crumley situation, her trial or James. James Crumley, and that was an interesting take that she had not heard of this. Three people, two young men, say they don't have televisions and have nothing to do with social media. That was interesting as well, given young people in social media these days. They say they don't want anything to do with it, and they get their news online. All of them talked about parenting skills, that uh, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. And if they did things behind their parents' backs, kind of drawing the defense here for James Crumley that he couldn't have possibly known what his son may have been planning up to the minutes of the shooting. That drew some objections from Karen McDonald saying, you cannot separate the two things here, what the son did and what they're going to try to prove James Crumley did with not parenting enough, not being involved enough. That could have been foreseeable then for what uh, his son did inside Oxford. Oxford High School. Kimberly? Sean, any idea how close they might be to seating a jury? This feels so much different than the first time we sat through jury selection with Jennifer Crumley. They may be somewhat close. They're going to question the same 15 that they had all day today. Again, this is out of a pool of 308 mm -hmm. brought here today. So uh, 40 remain in the, the courtroom to kind of give you an idea. No cameras here to protect the identity of jurors, but uh, they'll question the 15 tomorrow. Probably give or take both sides will let one or two go. They may be rather close here because they had a good rapport and a good back and forth about parenting and about guns and how to secure guns with this current group. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, Kim. Sure thing. All right, Sean, we appreciate it. And you can follow the entire trial live. We'll be streaming opening statements and testimony once things get underway. Just download local 4 plus wherever you find streaming content. 
If you are a U.S. military veteran or the family of a veteran, some news for you tonight. Major changes to VA health care benefits kit can do effect today and aim to expand access to millions of veterans, all part of the PACT Act designed to help veterans struggling with a range of ailments from asthma to cancers because of toxin exposure. The Department of Veterans Affairs says millions of U.S. veterans are now eligible for VA health care earlier than anticipated. This is the biggest expansion of VA care eligibility in generations. It's covered by the PACT Act, which means to expand VA benefits for service members exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, radiation, and other toxic substances. Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America CEO Allison Jaslow, an Iraq War veteran, says the benefits are especially crucial to her generation of veterans when burning trash and other waste in burn pits was common practice. In real time, we didn't know what kind of impact that would have, but I will say that most of us were thinking, not necessarily cancer, but like, what is this doing to, like if I'm breathing this in every single day. When the PACT Act became law in August of 2022, it laid out a plan to phase in eligibility for different groups of veterans until full implementation by 2032. But the VA is accelerating that timeline and all veterans exposed to toxins and other hazards while serving overseas or at home can apply for benefits now. Jaslow says getting more veterans into the VA system for proactive screenings and specialized care could save lives. Maybe your doctor out in the civilian sector doesn't know to ask if you were even in the military, let alone exposed to toxins. And being in the, uh, being in the care of VA practitioners is really a good thing for all generation of veterans. Now, the PACT Act also expanded VA benefits for surviving family members and dependents of veterans who died of related conditions. Family members can check eligibility for possible payments and pensions at va.gov slash PACT.